Romanticism is a movement in the arts that lasted from the mid-18th to 19th century. This era comes in direct contrast to the neoclassical era, or the Age of Reason, as it's called. Where back then, artists of all kinds aimed on capturing life as it was. The Romantic period was focused on spontaneity, creativity, and big emotions. An example of these elements in literature comes in Mary Shelley's 1817 novel, Frankenstein. Frankenstein itself is a story that needs no introduction. It and its monster have become pop culture icons, being featured in movies, video games, cereal boxes, album covers, whatever you can think of. Frankenstein serves as a great example of elements present in romantic literature. Throughout the novel, readers are shown themes of solitude, glorification of nature, and an emphasis on big emotions. Solitude as a theme of romantic literature dates back to its origins. Take Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rime of the Ancient Mariner. Part of the story follows a man damned to be stranded at sea, surrounded by nothing but the remains of his dead crewmates. In Frankenstein, the monster feels something similar, not because he's on a ship full of dead guys, but the way people treat him like a monster before really getting to know the guy. The ostracization he feels because of this leads him to be completely alone in a world with plenty of what he observes to be happy, loving people. His creator, though, he hates that guy. The theme of solitude follows the monster as he's rejected by his creator, the family he spies on through their shed, and pretty much everyone else. Victor himself even experiences a lot of isolation, cutting himself off from the world for a bit after making the monster, spending a few months on a remote island in Scotland, spending a few months in jail, and then having his entire family taken from him by his own creation. Sort of a retaliation by the monster for Victor bringing him into a world full of people who hate him for no reason. And then some. People in the Romantic period loved nature. So much that there was an entire offshoot called the Transcendentalist Movement, wherein people believed that by getting closer to nature, they'd be closer to God and understand the true ways of the universe, all that. In Frankenstein, there's a lot of dwelling on nature, and appreciation for it. Multiple times in the novel, the titular scientist actual philosopher, the term scientist hadn't been invented yet. Frankenstein himself talks about the hills and water bodies of Geneva, his hometown, quite a bit. His BFF, Henry Clerval, is even more into the idea, putting Victor on to the beauty of Europe when he visits him in Ingolstadt, and when the two take a platonic trip around the UK in the third act of the novel. Though none of the characters go out into the woods and write a diary about how enlightened they are, Mary Shelley does go out of her way to talk about nature and how it impacts the characters, specifically their emotions. The novel was written over a vacation on Lake Geneva during the summer. The dark, gloomy mood combined with current scientific controversies and a fit of sleep paralysis she experienced led her to write the somber story that we all know and love. Some of the emotions that the characters experience are directly based on her experiences from that fateful summer up in Switzerland. Those said emotions are big and bombastic, exaggerated, as was the case for the time. Look at these neoclassical paintings from the 1700s, all rigid, still capturing the form of life and relatively emotionless, basically medieval paintings with more rendering. Contrast that with the Romantic period. This ain't your mama's fine art. People are showing emotions. They're not just standing, they're slumped over dead, supernatural creatures, big angels in the sky, so much drama in this Coldplay album cover. There also happens to be a lot of drama in Frankenstein. People faint when they see the monster. Victor goes on long monologues about how he wishes to destroy his creation, and how awful he feels for unleashing it into the world. How scared of it he is. Victor becomes sleepless, has nightmares, among other things. The monster has some big emotions, and likes to express them too, but you can chalk that up to his situation. The word countenance is used so many times in this book, it's crazy. It just means facial expression, but it's always used to talk about emotion. You also get a lot of, oh, adjective noun, as exclamations. There's a lot more to talk about with Frankenstein, and this is just putting it in context of the time. There are a lot of examples of Romantic period literature, but Frankenstein is probably the most famous, or at least the one I know. Is the fame due to the way it incorporates those literary elements to tell an engaging story, or its many adaptations? I'll leave that up for you to decide. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I did making it.